to me, beetles look like gemstones with scuttly legs. And I've wanted to paint a picture like this to celebrate all their diversity for absolutely ages. But before I undertook one, I think there are 38 on there, I thought I'd better do a sample and just get my head around how to capture that iridescence and how much detail I wanted to put in, things like that. And that's what I want to share with you this week. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week we're going to learn from this beetle. And even if you're not that keen on them, we're going to learn about layering, working wet and wet, adding enough detail, lifting out highlights, all sorts of lessons. For the past couple of weeks my mind has been turning to lovely beetles and insects and that's partly because I have a Facebook group and we do a monthly challenge and this this month is all about insects but I want to paint a big painting that will end up looking like a tray of insects that you see in the Natural History Museum so I thought we'd start off by doing just one beetle get get the hang of it and then I'm going to be doing lots and lots and lots of them so this is going to be a really fun project because it will allow us to use beautiful colour and we'll do some details, some wet and wet. You know, it's got all sorts going for it. I'm lucky enough to have some of these little samples in, in sort of resin blocks that I got off eBay. You might have or be able to go to the library and get a, a little book like this. It's a lovely vintage book with some really pretty illustrations that might give you some ideas. Or of course you can always find pictures on the internet. Pixabay has got some brilliant pictures. I'll put a copy of this outline onto the, the community tab so if you want to use it you're very welcome. So a little piece of £140 not paper here and as I say I've done a detailed drawing at this point. I need to swatch out some colours. I've decided to do this lovely bug. If I move it around you can see it's sort of got gold iridescence. In my final piece I'm going to do all sorts. I thought phthalo green would be a great colour. It's rather dried up in the tube but as soon as you add water just look at that. That's fab. I've got green gold which is beautiful again just look at that color and look how they're going to mix that's just going to be perfect for this there is blue in there so again i've got some phthalo oh gosh that's a lot look at that and how it mixes with the um, green to make a really beautiful turquoise but then i was looking really closely and i think there is a fair amount of ultramarine in there so i thought oh well that's what i need but I'm not honestly sure I do it out and that's the whole reason for swatching to say is this a colour I need I mean these colours are all beautifully transparent and the ultramarine isn't so much now you might look at a beetle and think "Ooh, it's got black legs it's always so much nicer if you mix your own dark and I thought that if I mixed some of that fallow green with some diox violet gosh look at that colour isn't that lovely we would get a really good dark so let's just check my assumption yeah that's going to be great and so much more interesting than just grabbing a tube of black paint i've swatched those out and they all mix beautifully in fact i rather like just the, the swatches but i don't think i need that ultramarine blue when you're swatching use a piece of paper the same as you're going to be painting on to make sure you get a fair representation of what the colour is going to look like. So having decided colours I've put them out into my palette and just add a little water to make sure they're, they're good to go because I'm going to do some wet and wet work and I want them to be all ready to use when I'm ready and I've mixed a tiny bit of the fallow green with the purple in the centre as well. I've got a Oh, it's about a size six with a nice point and I think that will be fine for doing the whole thing. The thing I'm going to do is start on its sort of head here, then work down onto the, the shell casing, then the legs and all the appendages. 
I think that's probably the best way of going. This is far more detailed than I would usually paint. And actually that's really good. That's good for me because it's, it's always great to try different things. And I usually like to be splishy splashy, but I think this will be good for me. And I'm going to wet with clean water the head area so that we get some nice interesting merges and marks and I'm taking some of that green gold and letting that go into the head so that it's a sort of under colour for the rest. But I think it will be good to let the colours merge and mix on the surface to try and get some real sort of iridescence going on. Then I'm going to come round and put in some of the phthalo blue and then on the edges, and I think it might be a bit too wet at the moment, I am going to put my dark mix of violet and the um, phthalo green. I'm going to be patient and let those just sit and dry. I'm not going to use a hairdryer because that's wet and it would all move around. I'm expecting this to fade a little because watercolour always dries, what, 15% lighter? So I may end up doing a second pass over that. Just observing again, maybe that highlight I've left is too goes sort of a bit darker there so I might just put some of that there. I am going to do exactly the same and I'm really squinting at my little bug at the moment. So it's got that sort of central triangle which is all quite green. We haven't actually got that many bright hard highlights but I think to get that sort of feeling of metallic shine it might be worth actually inventing some so i'm going to keep this area separate come down here i'm pre-wetting the paper because at the moment it's very warm here and everything's drying quickly so just a bit of pre-wetting wouldn't hurt anybody spread into there because obviously I was a bit cat candy. I love this green gold. I think it's such a pretty colour. And just as I did on the head, I'm going to drop in some of the fallow around the edges for that triangle bit. Actually that's quite nice where those two merge so I'm going to live with that. In fact, I'm enjoying that. I might encourage some of that to come in and join those two sections. So always, it's just nice to, to respond to what has happened. So if something happens, you think, oh, I like that. Do more of it. And if something horrible happens, do less. Now, if you want to lift a soft highlight as opposed to a hard highlight, what you can do is get a clean brush, take off the moisture on a bit of towel or a rag and we call that a thirsty brush and then you can sort of scoop up a little bit of your paint and you will get a soft highlight. Depending how wet it is, the paint may go back in. So you just need to keep an eye on that and carry on scooping up the paint until it stays put. You could let it dry and then do a very similar thing but with a damp brush and just scrub and lift some of the paint so you have some alternatives if you want a soft highlight rather than a really um, hard one. You can see why beetles are such a lovely subject because it lets you use all your really bright colours. We get rose chafers in the garden which I know are terribly bad for the roses. Oh didn't mean to do that but Oh, I might let that just go. Oh, look at those colours. It's a trouble of trying to paint and talk at the same time. It is a skill and I'm not sure, but I've always got it. <laughs> so if I hadn't done that, I would be doing exactly the same process on the other side of 
putting that under layer of the green gold then putting in some of that lovely fallow i'm leaving gaps between which i will go back in when it's dry to, to get some really sharp lines because you know beetles are sharp and hard you don't want everything to be soft and while it's wet you can certainly carry on adding a little more and but once it has dried you need to stop so if i am careful i can come and start working on the legs i'm just mixing up more of the green and purple just trying to get a really good dark now looking closely the legs aren't all black if you move this in the light you will see that there is some of that lovely green in the, the top part of the legs and then i'm going to move to the black and just let that move in there i'm using the tip of my brush and leaving a tiny bit of white between the segments so you can see their segments but i am joining them on because otherwise his legs would fall off which would never be good and then they've got a sort of little claw thing at the end so again that's all quite wet i'm just going to let it sit there and not fiddle with it and let it dry naturally if i tried to use a hairdryer on it that would um, just move the paint around too much so we need to observe and see the first pair of legs actually come out of the top segment and it's only the third pair of legs that comes out of the body shell so we need to really observe what's going on so even if you think oh i know what a beetle looks like or you know you're painting a ladybird and we all know what ladybirds look like it's just worth really looking and really observing what's going on so that uh, you're not making assumptions i mean i did count all these little segments and how many on some legs there were sort of five segments and some were six you know that is up to you and you know how how precise you want to be but just as a general rule make sure it is i don't know biologically accurate would be a nice way of putting it a lot of this green in the first leg has disappeared so i could try and recover a little of that by using my thirsty brush and just pushing that color out of the way it's an important thing to think of is how are things drying and just because you painted this area don't ignore it if you were painting the legs and then looked over and thought oh that's doing something horrible you know you can still do something about it if you look really closely there are sort of slightly hairy bits on these legs now i am not doing a study for a scientific journal so i'm not going to bother with that just let that dry a bit before i put some dark on top of it because it's all quite wet coming down my little segments again just just joining those on in a in a place Let's see how that's doing so we're working on dry paper here but we are letting it mingle wet into wet it's interesting you know the more you look the more you really do see and as i'm moving it there is a tiny glint of almost a sienna color which i hadn't observed before so i am wondering whether i might still have time to grab a little burnt sienna or orange and just put in the tiniest touch of that brown round the legs i've got a little bit of this uh quin sienna it was the one that came to hand because i wanted to do this really quickly before everything dries too much i can just see a tiny bit i don't know that it will actually show up very much but there is definitely a little bit of that orange in there 
so I'll emphasize it more that side but it just goes to prove that the more you look the more you see and you start off thinking oh I know what a bug looks like and then you end up learning something more which is one of the joys of painting now if you're left-handed or right-handed you may find it easier to move your work around so that you don't smudge or that it's just a more natural way of working I'm just going to put that under color there just let that go traveling down there I think as a general rule if you've introduced a color to one place it's a really good idea to have it in a couple of places so it doesn't just sort of stand out and look a bit odd be aware with your brush stroke that naturally it goes thick to thin so say you're doing these little it's toes i'm sure they're not toes you might want to start at the leg and go out if you want them to end up thinner it's just the natural way that your brush stroke works we think of beetles as being symmetrical and you might want it to be symmetrical I deliberately don't want this this isn't symmetrical so if you look at the front legs one curves in this one curves out and I'm happy with that but of course you could always change it if you want it to be identical both sides right, if we come up to its sort of mandibles and headpiece I can again see there's a glint of color in that triangle so I'm going to put some color in there maybe a bit much so I can use a thirsty brush just to pull that off if I need to a little bit of that mix and then I've got this wonderful wiggly shape round here comes up into this bit here now looking closely i could see that there's a little bit of a highlight because there is a bit of a structure there so i'm going to leave that white but i don't want it hard white like that so once it's dried a bit i'll just go over there with my damp brush and soften that edge so this is what i meant about with my my damp brush just going back over So I've got some variation I need to let that dry and then work out whether I want to do another layer over anything. Again, it's something I didn't really observe until I started looking. So the joy of painting is that you just start to see so much more once you once you get going. I suspected when it was dry, it was a little bit light. So I ended up doing exactly the same process all over it again in a second layer and you can see how much richer the colour is now. So it's time for details and I've mixed up quite a creamy dark and I'm using the tip of my brush and holding my brush very vertically so that that fine point can be used to put in the really dark areas between the shell now the two halves you can of the see shell, i've left some little white marks around that sort of triangle area. some of which actually i'm, I'm finding that i'm with, getting a it few gives that feeling of white shine. showing through some of which that doesn't I'm matter not in places with, so it's almost I'll like a glint and a little bit more of a reflection but obviously if i don't like them i can just touch them up as much as i want now i need to be careful not to outline the entire beetle and the temptation is to do that now again with my observation i've seen there's a sort of shadowy area halfway down those wing casings so i'm just putting a very dilute mix of some of that dark in place to create shadow. once it's dry all that's left to do is to carefully rub out any pencil lines that are showing and now I want to lift out a few highlights. So I've got a damp, short bristled brush and I just gently scrub the paint and then use a bit of kitchen towel to lift away pigment that I've loosened. And I'm doing that just to give a little bit of highlight and shape. 
don't do too much, which is the real temptation because this is great fun. I'm not sure I want a shadow on my final piece, but on this practice one I thought I'd have a go. And I want the edge of the shadow to be soft, so I'm wetting it on a larger area than where I think the shadow will be. And I'm looking at my little sample to see where the shadow would be. I'm dropping out in a bit of a bluey green mix behind it and letting that diffuse out. Then for each leg, I'm putting in a stripe of water and then dropping in just a little bit of the same mix so that it can run down through it. Say, so don't want anything super defined and you just keep it soft to see if that'll lift it off the page. I'm not sure that I would want this. So I don't think I'll do it in the final piece, but it's always worth having a little look. And I thought you might like to see the final big piece that I did um, using these techniques. And there are 38 beetles on this. It took forever. <laughs> 